G'day Hammerheads, has this ever happened to you? If so, you probably thought to yourself, I should probably actually hold on to that drill. But then next you probably thought, man, I wish this thing had some kind of kickback control to protect me in case it binds up. Well, you're in luck because it's the 21st century and uh, a lot of these rotary hammers are starting to get digital kickback controls going on inside. And I noticed that a lot of the bigger hammers in my collection had that, so I thought, hey, Let's try and get these guys kicking and let's see how well that kickback control actually works. So of course before kickback control was invented, uh, basically you just relied on a clutch like this. So this is the drive shaft and tool holder of an old drill. Drill bit goes in there. And the spring loaded part is the clutch, so if the drill bit binds up, uh, that'll basically start clicking around. Uh, I'll just stick it in the vise to demonstrate. So if you ever hear a drill making a crunchy kind of sound after it's bound up, that's what's going on. Really fast though. But of course the drills we're testing today will also have some kind of accelerometer based thing. So a little accelerometer chip inside like what's inside there. And basically they'll be using the data from the accelerometer as the drill moves to uh, work out when the movement patterns changed and then cut the power. So they might be basing that on just acceleration. So as the drill's moving, it'll suddenly jerk. And then something like that will trigger the, the braking. Maybe angular velocity. So drill, 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 drill. So a big spike like that will trigger it. Or even just the angle. Drill, 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 drill. So, you know, any, any sudden change in any of these parameters, oh, I doubt they'd use magnetic field, uh, but any, any sudden change in those parameters would be, you know, something that they're using there. Of course, all these tools are brushless, which as we know means the, uh, the motors are electronically commutated. So that magnetic field is being controlled by a little computer in there. And basically when the sensor goes off from the accelerometer, the computer just cuts the turning on the magnetic field and then that's your electronic braking. So the test rig is pretty simple. It's just a C-frame press with a bit of Aussie hardwood on there, spotted gum. Drill turns the screw in, that gives it a nice hard stop point. That's all just secured in my vise, and yes, my vise is mobile. And we just measure the releasing torque with the old torque meter. So let's meet the drills. Uh, in alphabetical order, we've got the RAM set. So this is of course just a rebadged Bosch. It is the GBH18V26F. And I think Bosch is actually the first ones who actually got the whole kickback control thing going. Because it goes back to at least 2018 uh, that I know of, but they also managed to nab the name kickback control. So uh, I'm guessing they were the first ones to actually stick it in these tools. So the giant yellow one is the DeWalt DCH333 and it has the confusingly named anti-rotation system. And since this bit is meant to rotate, I'm pretty sure they mean the drill rotating. And in the green, we've got the Hikoki DH36DPE. Uh, this guy has reactive force control. And the baby of the group is the Hilti TE4 22 Neuron. This guy has active torque control.
And on Team Teal, we got the Mighty Makita HR001G. So this guy's got active feedback sensing technology. Beautiful. From Milwaukee, we've got the M18 FHP with, uh, where is it? Auto stop. Auto stop. As well as the smaller M18 FH. Auto stop. All right, and after all that kicking, we ended up with the Bosch Ram set in first place with the lowest releasing torque, 7.9 Newton meters, followed by the Makita, 8.49 Newton meters. Next up was the smaller Milwaukee, 10.01 Newton meters average there. And fourth place was the Hikoki with 11.13. Big Yeller, 12.14, then the little Neuron, 16.23. And in last place with the heaviest torque was the big Milwaukee, 16.3 Newton meters. So there you go, Hammerheads, a nice quick test uh, that'll hopefully demonstrate how well this technology is working for you. Uh, if you are looking to buy a bigger hammer and you want to be protected, then, you know, that's going to be a good option. Uh, so the standouts were the, the orange Bosch here and also the 40 volt Makita. Turns out the Hikoki back here, she actually had a pretty light clutch, so pretty hard to actually get the kickback control working. And the Hilti, a little bit light, so uh, she, she tended to move pretty fast. But, you know, that motor there is going to be stalling uh, pretty readily if you've actually got both hands on the tool. So this guy, the other Milwaukee and the DeWalt, uh, they all worked really reliably. So for the user, it's going to be pretty safe inherently already if you're drilling horizontally just because there's a lot of weight down there to try and, you know, rotate. So if you are new to using these tools and you maybe got one that doesn't have kickback control yet, uh, a couple of things you can do are basically hold on to the damn thing when you're drilling, obviously. So if you're in a position where you're going to be drilling one-handed and you are, uh, you know, you maybe can't reach the front handle there, try to use your left hand so that the rotation rests it out of your grip and deactivates the drill. Also, if you think there's going to be rebar around, make sure you use an actual four cutter rebar bit. The four cutter on there, that's going to grab the rebar less readily. Hopefully it'll bounce off. It won't catch as much as a, a two cutter will. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you reckon. And, you know, remember, I'm a trained professional. Don't try this at home. <laughs> so as usual, let us know what you reckon down in the comments. And as you saw, I started playing with little accelerometers to try and replace the, uh, the phone app that I've been using to measure vibrations. So if you've got any ideas or any tips for, for using these and strapping them to drills in meaningful ways, then uh, let us know. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll scratch you later.